the righteousness that you have in you is also the ability to do right is the power to do right is the power to keep unity is the power to behave yourself it's time to grow up we have the gifts of god in the house it's time to grow where we are not moved by every wind of doctrine you hear the light of the glorious gospel of christ has filled your heart already the more you expose yourself to the word of god the more you begin to see how to behave you see yourself because the word of god begins to mirror you back to yourself this is me this is how i talk this is how i behave hallelujah let him feel you this morning let him strengthen you this morning let him encourage you this morning let him love you this morning let him lift you this morning let him fill you with wisdom this morning let him fill you with understanding this morning let him fill him fill you with his grace his mercy oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that wholeness. Thank you for that soundness. Thank you for that perfection. Thank you for that peace. Thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. Somebody is allowing God's peace to fill their heart right now. Just take that peace. Allow His peace to invade you. Allow His peace to invade you. Allow His peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We lift up our hands in reference to God this morning. We lift up our hands in reference to his presence. His presence is heavy in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And that same presence will go with you as you leave this place. Go with you to your homes. Go with you to your place of work, your job, to your schools. That same presence, people will see, they will feel and experience His manifest presence with you this week. His manifest presence. They will look at you and say, there is something different about you. You will come to an atmosphere and God will come in with you in the name of the lord jesus that manifest presence will cause a lot of things to happen this week uh, will bring a shift and opening a lifting in the name of jesus thank you lord the unusual will happen in the name of jesus thank you lord jesus you will be remembered this week for those who have been forgotten in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated this morning. Oh, before we sit, before we sit, hallelujah. The Bible says when Jesus ascended, he gave gifts to men. Hallelujah. And the gift that he gave to men is in form of men. Hallelujah. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, he said he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers, uh, some evangelists for the perfecting of the saints. And thank God this morning, we have God, God's gift to us. Hallelujah. God's gift to us in this house. God's gift to this nation. God's gift to this generation. Hallelujah. Our lives have been affected. Our lives have been changed. Our lives have been transformed because of the gift of God in the person of our daddy. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the grace of God upon his life. Hallelujah. We love you, son. Amen. You can all be seated. Amen. And celebrate yourself quickly. Put your hands together for yourself. Amen. Thank you for coming to church. Thank you for making God your priority. You put him first. Thank you for seeking God. 
He said he has not called the children, the sons of Jacob, to seek him in vain. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You're seeking God. You're, you're following and pursuing hard after him will never be in vain. Amen. There will be a clear difference between Amen. you and those who are not serving. Oh, yeah. Those who are not seeking. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a demarcation around you. You are exempted from the things that befalls people who don't serve and follow God. You made your choice, they made their choice, but you made your choice to follow and to serve him. So he cannot but, you know, display himself, show himself, manifest himself on your behalf. Hallelujah. So you walk with that confidence, walk with that boldness in the name of Jesus. You are not called to serve him in vain. You are not called to seek him in vain. Your labor of love shall never be in vain. You may think, I'm here, coming here. People go to church by 10 a.m. I'm here, 6 a.m. It's not in vain. He sees it. And it's for the bigger picture. You may not see the bigger picture, but he's got a bigger picture. And God is proud of you. God is pleased with you. God is excited with you. Hallelujah. So you must be excited and you must be proud of yourself also. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for ourselves and celebrate ourselves. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So quickly this morning, we look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. It's going to be more of a house cleaning. God's word is going to be coming to us, rebuking, correcting, exalting, you know, perfecting us uh, to do greater works and, and better works in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's word is going to be coming to renew our minds, not just us, my one. It says, I therefore, the prisoner... This Paul speaking, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy. In other words, live and behave in a manner of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Now I will try to read other versions of that. In the BBE, it says, uh, I then, the prisoner in the Lord, make this request from my heart that you will see that your behavior is a credit to the position in which God's purpose has given to you. Your behavior should be to the credit. It should be in alignment with the position that God has proposed or God has given you or God has called you into. Hallelujah. Easy English says, so I who am in prison for the Lord ask you something strongly. He said, this is what I'm asking you strongly. He said, God has chosen you to be his own people. He said, so I ask you to live as God's own people should live. So live in accordance with what you have been called to do. With, with what you've been chosen to, with what you've been given birth to, live in accordance, behave in accordance. Hallelujah. Uh, ISV version says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to live in a way that is worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Hallelujah. Our minister was ministering this morning uh, during the uh, uh, exhortation talking about we living our lives in line with you know our behavior should reflect the calling of God upon our lives praise the Lord Amen. hallelujah Amen. so looking at this verse I would like you to take your time when you go back read the whole of uh, Ephesians from chapter 1 2 and 3 it gives you a, a good background of of this verse 4 I mean chapter 4 praise the Lord so from the previous verses, we see who and what we've been called to. Hallelujah. We've been called to be children of God. Amen. The other day when Ima was preaching, that was the first thing he showed us. Who are you? We are children of God. So from those verses pre preceding chapters to this chapter, he's telling you now, 
And now that you know that you've been called to be children of God, you've been called out of darkness. You are no longer darkness. Before you were dead, but you are no longer dead. Now you are alive. You've been made alive. You're no longer a stranger. You're no longer an alien. Praise the Lord. You're no longer an alien. Now you are the children of God. You are the children of light. You are the inheritance of God. You are the heir of God. He says now in, in, in chapter 4 verse 1, he's telling you, now live or walk worthy in accordance to what you've been called to. Now walk in accordance to your real self. Your real self is not darkness. Your real self is not uh, the children of disobedience as you see in chapter 2. Your real self is not an alien. Your real self is not a stranger. You are no longer stranger to God. Hallelujah. You are no longer stranger to the things of God. He said, that which you have been called to. He said, now walk. So there is a walk that we've been called to. There is a life that we've been called to. There is a manner of life. There is a manner that we've been called to. A lot of Christians don't know that. That there is a difference between when you you were in the world, and now that you are born again, now that you are a child of God, there is a man that they don't know the difference. That's why at times, I remember those days, you look for my trouble, I will give it to you very well. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will say, let me, keep, let me remove the Christian listing, and let me show you my real color. <laughs> and there is no real color again. The real color is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no other self outside of the self of Christ. Amen. There is no other self but Christ. Galatians 2.20. Read that for me. Even though it's not in line, but that just dropped in my spirit. Galatians 2.20. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Yeah. Nevertheless, I live. I live both. Yet, not I. Who lives now? He said, but Christ liveth in me. He doesn't visit. Uh -uh, he doesn't come for weekends. He doesn't come for vacation. He liveth. You are living, but the living is no longer you. It's no longer my true color. The living becomes Christ. He said, and the life which I now live, in this flesh, yeah. physically now. Yeah. You don't say I cannot change. No, that is how I behave. No, that is how I talk. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. Jesus will not behave and talk like that. Yes. But he shows you in his word how to live, how to behave. So there is a manner. Yes. There is a way to walk. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yes. And he says live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. This is telling you, this is how we live. I live by the faith. So it's a living by faith. Yeah. We live it by faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is by faith. Yeah. Not by your human calculation. Yeah. Not by your wisdom. Not by your own idea. We live it by the faith of the Son of Oh God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Because he loved me, he gave himself for me. I live his life by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, come. Now, live worthy. Live in accordance. Now, behave yourself in accordance to the vocation or to the calling where which you were called to. Called to. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 quickly. Colossians chapter 1 verse 10. It says that he might work worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every bad work. It says and increasing in the knowledge of God. This is what we do. We 
work worthy of the Lord unto pleasing Him. No more pleasing to our own self. Yeah. You were not called, or you are not called to please your own self, to do the way you, you deem fit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12. It says that you were worthy of God who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. He called you to his kingdom. There is a way, there is a thinking of his kingdom. There is a pattern of his kingdom. There is a way people think. There is a way people uh, behave. There is a way they act in this kingdom. This kingdom system is different from the world system. There are two systems. The system of the world and the system of the kingdom of God. So you need to get into the word of God to locate the system of the kingdom of God. It is a system of truth. Hallelujah. What is the truth then? You need to get into it, locate it for yourself. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Another version says some people argue Make free. When I make free, set free. The important thing is freedom. Yes. Even you are free. Yes. But you have to know it. So it's a kingdom of truth. It operates by truth and on truth and through knowledge. Yeah. And you've been called into this kingdom. And you've been called to glory, not to life of shame. It's a life of glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship. Another version says, We are his masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto what? Good works. Not your own works. So there are good works that God has ordained for you to walk in. And those are the good works we are here for to walk in. Anything out of it, we refuse it. But we walk in the good works that God has ordained us to walk in before the foundation of this world. He said, which God has ordained before that we should walk in them. So there is a walking that God has called you into. There is a pattern that God has called you into. There is a lifestyle that God has called you into. So just like I said, you didn't just get born again to do your own things, to walk your own way, to think the way you want to think. No, you are not permitted to think the way you want to think. Before, before you got born again, you could think the way you want to think. But now that you are born again, you cannot think the way you want to think. It is for your own good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We think the thoughts of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We think the word of God. We think in line with the word of God. If it is not in line with the word of God, we have no business doing that. It is not in, if it's not in line with love, you have no business thinking it. Yeah. If it is not in line with who God has created you uh, for, you do not have any business thinking in that direction. Yeah. At times, thoughts come up in my heart to think concerning certain people. And once that thought is coming, who the hell does she or does he think he is? You know, those kind of thoughts. And you will think, oh, it's just innocent to you thinking, no. As long as those thoughts are not in line with the word of God, not in line with love, if those kind of thoughts will pollute your heart yeah. immediately. Yeah. I opened my mouth and I said, hey, Satan. I will not think such thoughts Amen. towards that person. Amen. 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 Nobody is there monitoring me. What I know is the Holy Spirit who is at work in me. Yeah. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. I'm a son, I'm a daughter, I'm a child of God. So Holy Spirit helps me to think the right thoughts. And if the right thought and the wrong thought is coming, he helps me to notice, to perceive that, no, you don't think this way anymore. 
This is not how to think. You don't think failure. You don't think sickness. You don't think disease. You don't think low self-esteem. You don't think any way that is not in line with the word of God. You don't think unrighteous thoughts. You don't think dirty thoughts. Oh, you are just imagining you and that beautiful lady. And you don't think like that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because it's from thinking it becomes a reality. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says, work worthy of the vocation. Work worthy of the calling which you have received. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now let's go to uh, verse 2. It says, with what? Because I'm running through the, the book of Ephesians chapter 4. It says, with complete humility and meekness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Patience is the love that forbears with one another, which ordinarily you wouldn't do. Yeah. Yeah. There are people that do things to me at times, and I just want to, and I just remember that. Vicky, you are a Christian. <laughs> hey, I'm a Christian. Behave yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. This is your real self. At times you just, somebody is chatting with you on the phone and the, the conversation is heated and you just want to type, you just type that, 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 that Holy Spirit said, you don't respond like that. I'm a Christian. That is the point you really know that you're a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Before you could have done that, I don't give a damn. I will say it the way I want to say it. I will just say my mind. I don't care. You can go to hell. At times I said, go to hell and quit this. This is the same hell that you don't want people to go to. You are going to evangelize to them. You will not say, go to hell. You know, just, you know, don't go to hell. Just cancel it quickly, you know. I just cancel, cancel, cancel. And if I don't, I, I just leave it, not say anything. I just untie the things and just leave it. Not to say anything. Behave yourself. You don't have to say it. I need to say it. Let it, let it choke them. I don't know if you understand that English. That means let it pierce, let it, let it pepper, let, and other people let it pepper them, let it bend. I need to say it the way I'm feeling it. No, we don't go by feelings. We are not sense ruled. You are not ruled by what you see, what you hear, how you feel. Lots of times the reason why we've gotten into trouble and other people into trouble is because we have said and done things the way we feel. And after we do that, the eyes will clear down and say, something told me to do that. Behave yourself. That's not the real self. He said, bearing with one another in what? In love. Because of love. Because the love of God constrains us. Because of love, there are things you cannot do anymore. There are things you can't say anymore. There are places you cannot show up or appear anymore. Hallelujah. It's a bearing with one another. In love. It's a striving. Striving to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Striving to keep the unity is not Holy Spirit's work. He has done his work of uniting us in this church as a family, in your home, in your places of work. But he tells you, you strive. You are the one to strive to keep To keep the bond of unity. To keep the bond of peace. Whatever it takes, you are the one to do it. 
the unity the Holy Spirit is cropping, is working, is creating amongst us. We are the ones. Because things will come to want to take out our unity. Hallelujah. Amen. And now whenever God is talking about unity, it's because he wants to do th something great. Amen. Amen. We see that in the book of Acts chapter 2. Because they were united. Yeah. Holy Ghost came. Yeah. Hallelujah. So when God is talking about unity like that, watch it. Something is about to happen. Collectively as a church and individually. Praise the Lord. He said, for there is, why should you strive to keep the unity of peace? He said, there is, verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, just as you are called in one hope of, of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. One, one, unity is showing us. So he said, you strive to keep the unity. It doesn't matter what the next person is doing. You, you strive that there must be unity here and that is it. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, it takes two to tango. If the other person is misbehaving and you are not joining that person to misbehave, will there be a tangling or tangling? No. Hallelujah. So you have the right to behave yourself. Hallelujah. You have the right to do right. Praise the Lord. You have the right to do the right thing. The righteousness that you have in you is also the ability to do right. Is the power to do right. Is the power to keep unity. Is the power to behave yourself. That righteousness, that ability on the inside of you is not a power to do anyhow. No, I, I cannot help myself. I'm just like this. No. You can help yourself because there is ability on the inside of you to do right. Praise the Lord. So it goes further to say, but to each one of us, grace has been given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Given for what? It says, therefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Praise the Lord. Now, if we go further, we will now see the gifts that he gave to men. He said, now that he ascended, he ascended, what is it but that force, he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also who ascended up far above all heavens, that he may fill all things, and he gave some. These are the gifts that he has given to help you, to equip you. He said he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, and some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Hallelujah. Why? He said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Another version said, for the edifying. So the fivefold ministry gifts, they, are, they have been given. They are a gift and we receive their ministry. They have been given words to build you, to equip you. To edify you so that you will do the work of the ministry. So everybody here is being equipped to do what? Do the work of the ministry. Now, why were these gifts given? Let's go ahead, verse 13. It said, until we all. So you've got to get your act together. Each and every one of us. Praise the Lord. It said, until we all, all of us. God is interested in all of us. Getting our ass together, behaving ourselves, working according to the vocation to which we've been called. He said, until we all come into the unity of faith, that is important to him, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a complete person, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Come to maturity. That is what he's saying. Leave childish things now. Come to maturity. Hallelujah. He says, so that we will not be children tossed this way and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery and cunning craftiness of men in their deceitful plotting. No, we are no longer children. 
It's time to grow up. We have the gifts of God in the house. It's time to grow where we are not moved by every wind of doctrine you hear. You follow it this way. You go this way. No. We are growing up. We are coming to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that is it. That is our target. That is where we are headed to. The measure of the fullness of Christ. That is how God wants, uh, how God sees us. Hallelujah. It's about speaking the truth in love. This is your real you. You speak the truth. And you speak it in love. Oh, that brother, that sister did one, two, three, A, B, C, D. You got to tell that person the truth. You got to approach that person. But you do what? You do it in what? In love. Praise the Lord. It says... That, but speaking the truth in love, in, in love, in everything may grow up in him who is the head, that is Christ. He said, from him the whole body joined and knit together by what every ligament, every joint, every of us. What brings the knitting, what brings the joining is what every one of us we supply. Hallelujah. You've got something to supply in this house, so behave yourself. If you do not play your part, you affect the whole of us here. If she's not playing her part, she's affecting everyone here. If you are not in service when you should be in service and be doing something, you affect the whole of us. Hallelujah. So before the next time when you think of not coming to church, remember you are affecting. We want your supply. We need you to bring in your supply. Hallelujah. He said, um, measure of every part causes the body to do what? To grow and to edify itself in what? In love. He said, this I say therefore, verse 17, and solemnly declare in the Lord, henceforth you must not leave as other Gentiles live with their futile thinking as unbelievers lived from where you are coming from you must not live that way there is a way they think that is not how you think the Bible said blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly so we don't walk in the counsel. We don't walk in the thinking of the ungodly. Some men with their wives, when they sit, some men when they sit with their friends, ungodly friends, they start reporting their wives. My wife did this, my wife did that. And the other one will say, okay, you know, women are like children. They behave like children. So once in a while, you beat them. That is counsel of the ungodly. We walk not in the council. That is not how we behave. There is a way to behave. Rather, the Bible tells him, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for, for the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Love is giving. The, the way of God, the thinking of God is giving. Jesus gave himself. So that husband must be, be, be willing to give himself up for his wife. Giving up of self. That is what Jesus did on the cross. He gave himself up. Hallelujah. That is the way to think. You gave yourself up. You nourish her. Hallelujah. You wash her with the washing of the word. Washing of water by the word. The same way you wash things with water to make them clean. If you think your wife is misbehaving, your husband is misbehaving, what do you do? You take the word of God and you start washing, start applying so that you present her unto yourself without spot or wrinkle. Exactly the same thing Jesus did. Hallelujah. That is the way we think. We don't beat. We don't hit our spouse. We don't beat our wife. We don't abuse. We don't insult. We take care of them. We nourish them just like Christ. We are kind with them. We are patient with them because that is a son or a daughter of God. 
Hallelujah. For the fact that you are married to that person doesn't mean you treat them anyhow. First of all, I'm, a, I'm God's daughter. And you treat me as God's daughter. My husband is first of all God's son. I treat him as God's son. Praise the Lord. So that is the thinking and the thought of God. So there is a way we've been called to think. There is a way we've been called to behave. There is a way we've been called to act. Hallelujah. And so, so uh, Paul is telling us from here, he said, live not as gentle with a futile thinking. He said, their understanding is darkened. Our understanding is not darkened. He said, and they are shut out from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. They are ignorant. We are not ignorant. You are not ignorant. So you behave yourself. So you get into the word, look at what the word of God says you should do, and you behave. He said, resulting from the blindness of their heart. Your heart is not blind. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ has filled your heart already. That exposes darkness and removes the things that shouldn't be there. The more you expose yourself to the word of God, the more you begin to see how to behave. You see yourself because the word of God begins to mirror you back to yourself. This is me. This is how I talk. This is how I behave. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 19 says, being past feelings, they have given themselves to unrestrained laws to commit eagerly every impure act. Because their minds are darkened, they are, they are in ignorance, they are given to all kinds of things. But we are not given to all kinds of things. We, are, we came from there, we are no longer there. We are not given to impurity, no more. We are not given to immoral lifestyle. You go sleep with a woman who is not your, your wife, or you go sleep with a man who is not your, your husband, we are no longer there. Or you are not married, you go give yourself to somebody who is not your husband, we are no longer there. That is not how we live, it's not how we think, it's not how we behave. Hallelujah. Our bodies have become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. If they must have anything, tell them put the ring on it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Refuse to be messed up. Refuse to be laid anyhow. No. You are more than that. The Bible says marriage is honorable and the bad word undefiled. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, but you said you love me. Why can't you just do it once? No once anything. Go and do the right thing. Hallelujah. He said, but you did not learn, verse 20, but you did not learn Christ like that. You see, so Christ is not like that. That is not how Christ is. We don't behave like that. Now you are Christ. That is not how we behave. Our behavior is completely different. It's opposite. And that is where our power lies. Hallelujah. He said, if indeed you have heard him and be taught by him as the truth is in Jesus... He said, you learn this with regard to your former conduct. Then put off the old man. In other words, he's saying quit. He's saying resist. Put off. Switch off. If this light is here now and you switch it off, what happens? It goes off. It's not on. That is how you should do. The former life, he says, put it off. Who is to put it off? You. Jesus has played his part. So your part now that you can deal with, he said, deal with it. Put it off. Quit it. You are the one who will quit. They say, oh, oh it's difficult to, to, to stop smoking. The Bible says you do what? You quit. It's difficult to stop lying. The Bible says you do what? Quit. Because in your spirit, you are no longer that person. You are brand new. You are holy. You are perfect. That is who you are. A new creation. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have what passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are new. You are this creature that has never been seen before. 
You are as holy, as perfect, as blameless as Jesus himself. But now this body, this flesh is not born again. This flesh will want you to do anything. And I tell you, if you allow it, if you allow your flesh, it will get you into trouble big time. Hallelujah. But now what do you do? You switch it off. You quit it. You stop it. Another version says you, you mortify. You kill it. No, you cannot control me. My eyes, you cannot control me. My ears, you cannot control me. My lips, you cannot control me. My legs, you cannot control me to take me to places where I don't want to. Because the leg will be scratching you. Go there, go there. No, I'm not going. You stay here. You don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do. Go to church. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Instead of taking you everywhere, it's not supposed to take you. Tell it what to do. Instead of your mind behaving the way it wants to behave, you, tell, you cannot tell me to behave anyhow. Hallelujah. I'm no longer under the law. I'm under grace. Yes. And grace liberates me to do the right thing. Hallelujah. So he says, put it off. Put the old man off. Don't allow your flesh to control you. Your flesh is an instrument of righteousness. Hallelujah. Your hands, your legs, your mouth, your eyes, everything is an instrument of righteousness. You tell it, you behave right. I will not take nonsense from you. Hallelujah. The, the Paul who say, I put my, my body under. So the real is a spirit, and you put this body under. You say, no, you can't tell me to behave anyhow. You, you cannot tell me to feel sick. I refuse to feel sick. You cannot. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is how to, to deal with it. You open your mouth and you deal with it. He said, put it off the old man, which is corrupt according to its deceitful desires. This flesh is corrupt according to its deceitful desire. He said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When you are renewed in the spirit of your mind, what happens? Verse 24, he said, put on the new man. Who is putting on the new man? You. You do the opposite. Anytime the devil wants you to fight, just know what you should do. There's no fight. <laughs> Anytime the devil wants you to misbehave, just know, ah, you do the opposite. He said, put on the new man. In, in other words, practice. Practice being Christ. Practice the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, is peace, is joy, is kindness, is goodness, is meekness, is temperance, is self-control. He said, you practice it. Practice coming to church. It doesn't just happen. Practice reading your Bible. You have to carry it open it read it it will not read itself you will have to take it practice learn it why is her sister masha she says now she can pray why is she doing that she's practicing but there was a time prayer was a, a, a challenge the flesh you say i don't pray just relax just open your social media just stay there for morning to night but now pray so you put on the new man you put it on. Do the opposite of the old man. Hallelujah. Created by God in righteousness and true holiness. This is the true you. Created in righteousness, true holiness. You are holy. Behave holy. That is what I'm saying. Behave yourself. You are righteous. Behave yourself. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, put away lying. These are the things old man does. Lying. Put it away. That is not you. When that mouth wants to speak the things that is not right, just hold it. Hmm? And you just say, you, were, you are meant to speak the right thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have to hold it until it learns to behave the way you want it to behave. God at those days where they will tell you, no, you can't help yourself. You can help yourself. You have the ability of God. Don't allow things to mess you up, to embarrass you. No. Hallelujah. Rounding up now. He said, therefore, putting away lying. Every man must speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. 
You belong to me. I belong to you. Hallelujah. And we all belong to Christ. He said, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are angry. That day it happened. Deal with it. That day somebody offended you or offends you. Deal with it. Say, do not let it go down. Hallelujah. Behave yourself. That is how we behave. And he says, do not give place to the devil. Behave yourself. When the devil wants to come with all these things that have been named from the very first uh, verses, he says, don't give him a place. He wants to lie through you. He wants to fight through you. He wants to strive through you. He said, give him no place. He said, who formerly stole, still no more. Instead, he must labor working with his hands at some good tax so that he may have something to give to those in need. He said, let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth but what is good and useful for edification that it may minister grace to those who hear it if it does not minister don't say it behave yourself i speak the right word i have a right word ministry <laughs> it's in the book of proverbs right word ministry so only right things come out Hallelujah. He said, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. All these things said that are not right, they grieve the Holy Spirit. He said, by whom ye are called and sealed until the day of redemption. He said, let all bitterness, every rage, anger, uproar, evil speaking be put away from you. Who does that? You put it away. You do that by practicing it. Because this body will want it. The problem is not the person who is coming against you with those things. This body wants it, but you, uh -uh, I will not cooperate with that. I was sharing with minister the other day, somebody, very dear, very holy woman of God, one day just came and shouldered me like this. You won't believe it. We stood where to take pictures and she came from behind, she was standing behind. She shouldered me, use her help twice. Holy Spirit said, this is the devil. You must not give him place. Amen. What did I do to you? I would have turned one hand. One, one hand. You go. <laughs> one hand. Holy, devil said, the Holy Spirit said, this is the devil. Don't yield to it. For just show him where I'm coming from. Just you so, hey. rather it says what be kind to one another, be tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God for Christ's sake forgave you. Behave yourself. Yourself is to be kind. Yourself is to be tender hearted. Let not your heart be hard. Hallelujah. Forgive and give people the gift of healing. Let's stand up. The gift of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say to yourself, Lord, I put aside all of these things. You know your own things. So use your own mouth in God's presence and say, Lord, these are the areas. I put them aside and I put on the new man. Hallelujah. Thank